Guys, I hate to say it, but the truck market crash, well, it's here. Ram 2500s are 15% off. Ram 1500s are almost 14, and Jeep Gladiators are over 11% off on average. And it's not just the stuff from Stellantis that's suffering. Guys, this year is the year if you're gonna get a huge discount on a pickup, well, spend your money. Because today, we're gonna look at the current market collapse, which includes inventory buildups, economic influences, quality concerns, and the huge missteps automakers made by shifting towards electronic vehicles. And stick around till the end because I'm going to show you exactly how to get a steal of a deal on a truck this year. Let's go. Okay, so first, there's been a remarkable accumulation of truck inventory happening over the past couple of years. You see, full-size pickup truck sales saw a decline that started big time in early 2022. And at that time, trucks like the Nissan Titan saw a 14% drop off, Ram saw a 15% decline, and Ford, oh Ford, they saw a 31% reduction in sales in just one quarter. See, back in 20 and 21, mostly in part due with the chip shortage, it was almost impossible to get a truck. And if you did, you paid way over sticker. But let's fast forward to today. With the chip shortage figured out, brands like Ram, Ford, Toyota, and Chevrolet just kept out pumping out new high-priced trucks. Trucks which are now sitting on dealers' lots unsold because, well, they're pretty much sales-proof. Okay, guys, check out this Ford Raptor R. It has a beautiful V8 in it, but holy mackerel. I mean, it's a great looking truck for 152,975 buck. When did trucks get this expensive? Also, it has a dealer discount of $13,000, which is kind of nuts considering that used ones just a couple months ago were going for more than MSRP, like five to 10,000 miles on. So you can spend 139,975 for this beautiful truck. Although, it's a pretty big pill to swallow. All right, you guys, Ram trucks, trucks, and more trucks. Take a look at this. The top three trucks have AutoNation savings of 7,000, 8,000, and 7,000. Row two, we got 7,000, 5,000, and $5,000 off. So as you can see, they are actively discounting almost all of their truck inventory. Why? Well, the king of the crown as far as holding strong with pricing was the Toyota Tundra, but even they are offering dealer discounts like this beautiful 24 Toyota Tundra, brand new hybrid Crew Max with almost a $4,000 discount. Uh-oh. And if you recall this graph when Ford, Ram, and Nissan were struggling to sell trucks, take a look at the Tundra. They actually sold over 18% more than the previous quarter. When sales are up, discounts, well, they're down. And that's one of the telltale signs that the truck market is headed downhill fast. Even the Tundra, it's fallen. A giant, we're just getting started. You see, to add to the oversupply issues and new 2024s coming in, thousands of brand new outgoing 2023s are just sitting on lots unsold. Now guys, here are all of the brand new 2023 F-150s for sale throughout the nation and given by the oldest, which this first one right here, January 6th of 23 is when it was actually listed. And real quick, you guys can see how many of these trucks are brand new and available for sale. Now, the toughest thing is that dealerships have a really tough time selling brand new vehicles that have had a birthday without giving them a discount. And as you've seen, Already 24s are getting discounts. This is gonna be really interesting, you guys. Woo! -hoo! That's a lot of trucks. Okay, now let's get into the nitty gritty, shall we? If you check out this chart of annual inflation, you'll see that in 2021 and 2022, we had more than double what we normally do. Heck, even this past year was higher than normal. Which real quick, let me break down inflation for you. Essentially, over time, the money in your pocket buys less than it used to. So if you bought a pop for a dollar in 2020, it's gonna cost you a dollar and seven cents in 2021, and then even more in 2022. That's inflation, because you know, the world just keeps printing more money. So back to trucks. The brand new truck that was selling for $50,000, like the F-150 in 2020, cost almost $59,000 for the exact same spec truck this year, thanks to that ultra high inflation from 21 through 23. And high inflation rates often lead to higher interest rates. Back in 2020, the average new vehicle auto loan was only 3.85%, which means for a $50,000 vehicle over 60 months, you pay $917 per month, which equates to roughly five grand going towards interest over the life of the loan. Today, the average new vehicle loan is a whopping 7%. 
and you can see the payment is still a touch under $1,000 per month but you pay almost double in interest over the life of the loan, which makes people think thrice about taking out a loan in the first place, which drastically decreases demand, specifically with higher priced vehicles such as premium trucks. Well, they become less accessible because less people can afford the payments. And compounding all this are EVs. Electric trucks like the Ford Lightning have been such a sales flop. In fact, Ford has halved Lightning production for 2024. Not only is there lower demand for pickups, but there is also a lower demand for EVs as well. And as you can see, EVs are losing momentum with US buyers, as the graph for demand has continued to decrease. And this is where things have gotten really messy. Ford went all in on EV trucks and now is having to cut the production to meet demand. General Motors, on the other hand, has slow rolled coming out with an EV truck and an SUV. So yes, GM came out with the Hummer H1 with the crab walking feature, which yeah, is pretty cool, but it's also like 9,000 pounds. Now, the truck that they're coming out with is this guy, the first ever all electric Silverado, which honestly is pretty sweet. 400 mile range, 785 foot pounds of torque, almost the same amount of horsepower, and then you go zero to 60 and four, five, and then also toes up to 10,000 pounds? Sounds like a delight, but will it be? But they're gonna be launching it at relatively low production volume over the first few years, just to see if demand is really there. So now you're probably thinking, why with the sales flop of the F-150 Lightning and lower demand of EVs in general, big players like GM and others are still pushing forward to start building EV trucks? Well, thanks to regulatory changes, nine states plan to ban new gas-powered car sales by 2035, which is only about 10 years away. So love it or hate it, in about a decade, if you wanna buy a new vehicle, there's a pretty good chance it won't be burning fossil fuels. Okay, now let's look at the final dagger. Greed, yes, manufacturer suggested retail price or MSRP has been growing at record rates for trucks. A Ford F-150 had an MSRP of 65,000 and now just five years later, it's over $20,000 more for the exact same truck spec. The Tundra's MSRP was 51K and today it's $14,000 more expensive. And the GMC Sierra was 57 and now it's over $70,000 for the exact same trim. Now with the inflation, the increase in prices sort of makes sense. I mean, the cost of building these trucks has gone up right alongside everything else. But with the increase in quality concerns, more buyers, well, they're not willing to pay more for a lesser truck, especially when for a while dealers were asking over the already inflated MSRP. Ever since the pandemic, JD Power found that the quality of vehicles dropped substantially in its annual initial quality study. So yeah, it makes sense. Higher MSRPs coupled with quality concerns have led to consumer fatigue and reluctancy to purchase new trucks at inflated prices. Now, as I showed you earlier, dealerships in an attempt to boost sales have resorted to various pricing strategies, including offering massive discounts on models like the Ram Rebel and Toyota Tundra. However, these efforts have not even put a dent in the overarching issue of slow sales and dealer lots filled with excess supply. And remember the United Auto Workers strikes? Yeah, trucks were not being produced during that time, and yet it still hasn't alleviated the inventory issue at all. Even after production cuts during the strikes, dealers, well, they continue to have excess inventory. So high supply equals low demand, which means if you're in the market for a truck, you're in the driver's seat to get a great deal. And let me show you how. First, you're gonna to wanna to research the market to understand the average price of the truck model you're interested in. Now, my favorite tool to do this is kellybluebook.com. And you put in all the different info about the truck that you're looking at. And you can see for this Tundra that I put in, the MSRP is 70,330 and it's selling anywhere from 66.9 to just under MSRP. Also, you're gonna to wanna to time your purchase. I mean, the best time to shop is at the end of the year, then it's at the end of the quarter, then it's at the end of the month. Anytime you can do this, you're gonna get better discounts because, well, the dealers wanna clear their inventory. Also, do not forget to negotiate. Start with a lower offer than what you're willing to pay, according to that Kelly Blue Book, and work up from there. You gotta give a reasonable offer to show you're actually serious about buying, but don't be afraid to hit them with a low offer first. Then, scour the internet for rebates and incentives. Manufacturers often offer rebates, incentives, or special financing options. Check the manufacturer's website and inquire at dealerships. Also, get pre-approved for financing. Now, what this does is it gives you a clear budget that you know you can spend on a car. Even when pre-approved, be willing to finance through the dealership's preferred lenders if they can either match the rate or undercut them. 
See, dealers get a kickback from lenders, which can sweeten the deal on their end with virtually no downside on yours. Also, think about trade-in value. If you have a vehicle to trade in, research its value to ensure you get a fair trade-in deal. Most dealers are gonna make you an offer for your vehicle, even if you aren't trading it in. So in addition to KBB's trade-in tool, feel free to call around. Also, you wanna avoid extras. Dealerships make a significant profit from add-ons. Stick to what you need to avoid unnecessary costs. Don't pay for any fees and don't get talked into anything you don't want, like air in the tires and make sure you shop around. Don't limit yourself to one dealership. Explore multiple dealers to find the best deal. Heck, find similar vehicles at competing dealers and get them bidding against each other for your business. It almost always works. So have you been holding off on buying a truck? Are you gonna take advantage of this incredible time to buy one? Or are you gonna hold off and wait until they iron out all those quality concerns? Let us know in the comments below. And also let us know how bad you actually think it's gonna be. And if you enjoyed this vid, please like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and check out this ideal vid up here. Whatever YouTube recommends you watch next down here. I'm Brad, this is Ideal, and prompts me one thing. Keep living the ideal lifestyle.